Hello friends. Welcome to our channel Archie's Top 5. We put continuous efforts to create informative videos to help people on their personal and professional life. Today we will discuss about the importance of email etiquettes, what common mistakes professionals makes when drafting an email, and what need to be taken care while sending email your boss, colleague or for business. And now that many people are working remotely to help stop the spread of COVID-19, we can pretty much assume there are even more emails than usual being sent during the workday. We request you to please go through the whole video, as this is going to be very interesting and helpful in your professional life. Remember, unless you work at a super casual company, smiley faces, frowns, and other emoticons fail the email etiquette test. Please do not treat professional email like a text message. Let's see what common mistakes we make when sending an email. First mistake is spelling and grammatical errors. The meeting's venue has been changed. Is it meetings or meetings? This mistake might be small considering the grand content, but these small mistakes cost you a lot, especially in a professional email. Thinking of such silly mistakes, a grammar checking app might save us a lot of time and embarrassment. Let's look at some quick notes. We all are a pro in finding errors and typos in someone else's work but not ours. All you must do is trick your brain to see the errors of your own work. Read it aloud. Another idea is to try reading it backwards, that is, from the end to the beginning, which strips the content of its meaning and now, you will be able to point out the mistakes. The third one is to take some time away from the content you have just typed. Return to it after a couple of hours, then edit it with a fresh set of eyes. This really helps. Let's see the second mistake. Not including a clear subject line. The subject line is the most crucial and essential part of an email. It provides your recipient with the inside of your email and about why they have to open your mail. This one line is the deciding factor of your email, whether it has to be opened or sent to the spam folder. Let's see some quick notes. Mentioning the subject line with capital letters. Remember that using capital letters in situations like emails, essays, etc. means shouting out the term. There might be an important keyword in your subject to be specified, which can be mentioned in capitals. Otherwise, it is completely not necessary to use capitals. The word limit for your subject line cannot be more than 50 characters, example, 8 to 10 words. Do not flag every mail as urgent if it isn't. You need the recipient to open your mail, but you shouldn't demand attention and priority. Also, you don't want the recipient to cringe next time they see your email. It is very much vital for us to focus on spelling and grammar too. In the span of 50 characters, we don't want to make a silly spelling or grammatical error. It is as embarrassing as it sounds. Here is the third mistake. Not paying attention to body of the email. Depending on who you are emailing, it's best practice to introduce yourself by first and last name. As well as the company you are representing in the first few lines, professional emails should be as clear and to the point. Think of every sentence you write as essential to capturing the reader's attention and getting what you want out of the email. One of the biggest email goof-ups is using capital letters, whether done intentionally or by mistake. Writing an email in capital portrays a very harsh tone of communication. Even though the reply is not intended to sound harsh, an email typed in all caps appears angry and rude. The use of all bold characters must also be avoided. Let's see some of the notes. Use bullet points in short sentences to convey your message. Try to give inline response always if the question asked in the bullet points Content should be crisp, thorough, and non-iterative. Highlight key points like date, cost, and venue, etc. Ensure the tone of your message is correct. If you frequently plan to send emails of similar format, create templates for reuse. Do not add emoticons, jargons, or slang words in your email. Let's see the fourth mistake people make. Neglecting to proofread. Do not send the email after writing your first draft. Take some time to revise what you have written. Double-check your spelling especially the recipient's name. Cross-check the date and the time you have mentioned. Make sure that the time zone is also mentioned. Don't forget to test your hyperlinks and attachments, if any. We don't want to send a poorly optimized attachment or a hyperlink that throws an error. Read your paragraph backward as we mentioned under the spelling and grammatical errors section. Before clicking the send button, check the recipient in the subject line to make sure it has been modified accordingly. Let's see the fifth mistake we make while sending email. Hitting the send button when emotional. When angry, we often tend to express things that we later regret. But avoid that kind of email, it could come back to haunt you. Do not email when you're angry, hungry, or tired. Check in with your mental state and mindset before you press send. Get up from your desk, 
take a deep breath or even a walk to make sure you're in the right mental state. There are few people who write an email when they are emotional, especially when they were rejected or have failed to complete a task. Please do not send emails in this situation, because once you click the send button there is no taking back. Done and dusted. You have successfully sent your email, now what? There are a few other points we would like to share. You have sent the mail what else do we have to say about? Late night emails. It's great that you are a workaholic and you've been working all night, but that doesn't mean that you have to send an email at midnight. Who would want their phone notifying an email during odd hours? Improper use of reply all. Be cautious when you are replying to an email, especially when there are other recipients mentioned in the mail thread. Choose the specific recipient to whom the reply is necessary. Not replying. When you receive an email, it is necessary to let them know that you have read it. You don't want to leave people hanging. If the messages deserves a little more time and thought, reply and confirm that you received it. And notify the sender that you're going to take a little bit of time to think and respond. If you won't do this, it might seem ignorant, rude or unprofessional. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment box. Please like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon, so you will be aware when our new video publish. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.